marks the start of the Inca Trail. I guess we should explain that we aren't doing the traditional Inca Trail. Normally you can do a four-day walk or a ten-day walk. We're actually only doing a two-day walk. We're not really lazy, it's just kind of how it Come happened. on, we are. <laughs> maybe, maybe just a little bit. We crave our comfort. Um, so basically, we're going to be hiking for a full day and then we're going to get to Aguas Calientes and stay in a hotel, we're not staying in tents. And then the following day we'll be touring Machu Picchu with a guide and like learning the history of the place. So I guess really it's only one day walking the Inca Trail, but we're gonna say two to feel a little better about ourselves. Within five minutes of walking, we've already reached our first Incan site. This is amazing. More than 500 years ago, there were so many people hiking on the Inca trails to get to Machu Picchu. Yes. This is because Machu Picchu was a holy city for them. Okay. Pachacuti is a famous person here. Yes. We consider to him as Alexander the Great yes. in the Andes. We've probably been hiking for an hour and a half or two. How are you feeling? I am hot, I'm sweaty, and we've been going uphill almost the entire way. So I'm looking forward to hitting the lunch point and then going downhill all the way to Machu Picchu. Same here. <laughs> really getting into his photography over there. Coming? How's the walk? I'm still tired. Still tired, still oh, yeah. sweaty. Oh yeah. But we're still walking. Still going still at walking, it. Still walking, in need of a, desperately in need of a shower at the end of this. And maybe ice cream? Maybe ice cream. Maybe ice cream. We're like a hot spring. Halfway done the hike, what is something that's really surprised you so far? I guess maybe how the vegetation keeps changing. Like when we first started out the trek, it was green, sure, but like now as we're getting deeper into the mountains and like closer to waterfalls and rivers, it's really lush and there's lots of moss. And the temperature is actually a bit cooler. Like before, I was sweating and it was really humid, but now the temperature is starting to drop, which is really, really nice. made it to the archaeological site that we can see off in the distance, Winyai Hawaiina, straight ahead.
process is divided in three parts. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's similar to Machu Picchu. Right. So the only difference is that Machu Picchu is much, much bigger than this one. Yeah. Terraces are those people found the remains of the coca plants. Oh. You know, coca was one important plant for the Quechua, for the Inca people. Oh, yeah. They used coca as a currency, yeah. they used coca for medicine purposes, and they used coca for religious purposes. <laughs> But it's llama poop. So we've encountered the monkey steps. I think this is going to require climbing on all fours. Let's go. Do the monkey. Do the monkey. That's not very monkey like. Well, it's not very monkey like, so what? <laughs> so we've reached Inti Puko and this is where we're gonna get our first view of Machu Picchu and considering how long we've walked I think we've earned it. Inti Puko this way. Where did we make it to? We made it to the sun gate. Barely. Machu Picchu! Machu Picchu! We made it! How are you I feeling? I know, I know. After that long hike, it's amazing. And we're so lucky to have views like this because yeah, apparently it was raining for three days before we did this hike. I know. And we have sunshine and blue skies. And the lost city is waiting for us just over there. Llama selfie, going for the llama selfie. Hi llama, hi llama. Look at me, friends, or ignore me. So that is a wrap from Machu Picchu. We finished the hike, and tomorrow we'll be back to actually explore the lost city. Yeah, we have two days to do that, so that's awesome. We can't wait. So, do you think people will be able to guess where we are based on the landscape? I'm not too sure. It's quite foggy right now. Hmm, where could we be? What could be off in the distance? Good question. Should we tell? Yes. It is Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu. That is Machu Picchu, guys. Breathtaking, is it not? Baby llama having breakfast. Breakfast time. Can you give us an update on the current situation? So the current situation is that it has stopped raining yes. and it's starting to clear a bit. We're hopeful, it's right now it's 8.36 and we're hopeful that maybe around 10 or 11, if it doesn't rain again, that we'll have some nice sunshine clear, and a clear visibility of Machu Picchu. Get those Pichu. iconic views. We know that the Quechua people were able to mummify people, but they used to mummify some important people from their culture. So they used to modify to the royal to the royal family. They used to modify to some people who were part of the high class people. Right. So then they take the bodies, the mummies, into the cave, and they put them 
near fetal position mm -hmm. because they used to believe that they could enter to a different life after this life. The new hats, the chudos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the soldiers possibly use this to place the torch, the fire. Oh. Okay, but also they could maybe place here a pet. So this was maybe a llama, or this was maybe one alpaca that they would use to sacrifice in one of the temples. So here we're checking out. An Inca toilet. Is it an ensuite? I'd say so. What are we doing, Audrey? Getting our Machu Picchu stamp. So, this one's yours. Goodie. Well, lucky for you. to my home. This is the living area. It still needs to be furnished. And this over here is going to be a little reading nook. And I'm going to put my books. So we found a nice quiet spot here mm -hmm. and I want to know your impressions of coming back to Machu Picchu for a second time. Coming back a second time. Honestly, it's still amazing. It still impressed me. It still has that wow factor like six or seven years later. I think it's just one of those sites that is, I don't know, so special. And also it always looks different because the weather here changes so dramatically and it changes so quickly. So like when we first got here in the morning, it was super cold and foggy and we couldn't even see Machu Picchu. But now it's like the sun is starting to come out and the skies are starting to clear. So it's really cool just hanging out here for a few hours and seeing how it all changes. So yeah, I'm glad I came back. Okay, so Sam, you visited Machu Picchu about six years ago. How yeah, sure does this trip compare to that <laughs> one? This is like night and day. Six years ago, I was the ultimate cheapskate backpacker. I came to Machu Picchu using the cheapest transportation route possible. Basically, I took this van on this like really twisty serpentine off-road area. Then I went across on this cable car using this wooden trolley. It was really dangerous. And then eventually we did a bit of walking and took a train to get here. And I was so cheap at the time that they have these little buses that ply up and down to get up to Machu Picchu. Mm -hmm. And I was so cheap that I ended up walking up and down that big hill. And it was like exhausting. By the time we I actually got to Machu Picchu, I was already tired. Yeah, because that's a 25 minute bus ride. So <laughs> yeah. walking that would be a couple of yeah. hours. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, it's like up like that so yeah completely different experience this time around it was nice to do it using the actual Inca trail staying at a little bit of a nicer accommodations and coming to see the Machu Picchu with a guide this time around okay so now next question 
I know people always see Machu Picchu in documentaries, postcards, magazines. Do you think it's important for people to see it in person? Like, yeah, does it... absolutely. It's it's actually one of these these wonders of the world that actually lives up to its reputation. Mm -hmm. And what I really think, like, what I really get out of coming to Machu Picchu is just a sense of the sheer scale of the place. Like, it is massive. When you come here and walk around, you get a really good sense of just how big this this lost city of the Incas is. Woohoo! Go Machu Picchu! If you're planning to walk the Inca Trail or visit Machu Picchu, you'll likely end up spending at least a few days in Cusco. With its lively square, quirky museums, artisans markets, and traditional performances, this is exactly the type of destination you'll want to linger in. Plus, let's not forget, it's also a good place to adjust to the altitude. The following video will showcase 15 things to do in Cusco. Cusco Cathedral is a place you shouldn't miss. The cathedral sits on the site of Viracocha Inca's palace and it was also built using blocks from the nearby Inca site of Sacsayhuaman. Inside you'll find impressive works of art done in the Cusqueña style. We've been walking around town and we came across this fine example of Inca architecture. If you take a look at this wall right next to me, you can see how they've like placed the stones so that there isn't even a crack in between each of them. And apparently we haven't tried this, but you can try and like stuff a sheet of paper and it won't even fit because the stones just sit on top of each other perfectly. So that's pretty cool. There's a joke that my tour guide told me last time I visited Cusco and basically he said there's a section of wall that was built by the Incas and that's what you can see behind me but there's also a section of wall that was built by the Incapables or the Spaniards and you can see that over here and it's quite obvious that the stones don't really interlock quite the way the Incas were able to make them. In the evenings, you can go watch a traditional dance performance at Centro Costco. San Blas is one of the oldest neighborhoods in Cusco, and it is a great area to explore on foot. The neighborhood is known for its bright blue doors and window shutters, and it has a nice little square with a church and a water fountain. The neighborhood has some really cool lookout points with great panoramic views of Cusco, so you'll want to bring your camera. This afternoon is a bit of a shopping afternoon and we're at the Coricancha market. They have lots of really cool crafts and clothes and really great souvenirs. So I did a bit of shopping and I'm going to show you sure did. my purchase because I'm pretty happy with it. Look at this nice little alpaca sweater. And show us it's the hat too. Really warm for when we walk the Inca Trail. Show us the hat. 
and we got some cool hats as well. And you've got to try it on, of course. Oh no. Try it on. But try it's it going to look silly. You are silly though. But I have a big bun right now. Oh yeah. We'll zoom in for that. <laughs> Come on, smile. to be trying some traditional food from Cusco so we've placed our order and we're waiting for our food to arrive I'm not entirely sure what to expect because I've never really tried food from this region we've been eating light meals since we got to Cusco just because we're trying to deal with the altitude sickness so yeah this is our first day that we're ready for a big hearty meal Until the meal arrives, you've got some nice bread rolls in your hand. Yeah, these were freshly baked in the oven and I can't wait to try them. We have two different kinds of spicy sauces. They're mm -hmm. both called ají sauces. So let's take a look down here and we're gonna dunk it in. Actually, there's spoons, so I can do it a little more civilized, I suppose. And I will put a bit of, the red, a bit of red and a bit of green, and why not? Let's try that. Is that burning your mouth? Is your mouth on fire at the moment? No, I'm tasting more of the sauce than the bread. But the bread is good. It's, uh, it's melting in my mouth. And it was made in the oven right behind you. Right over there. Right over there. Fancy. So my meal has arrived. I ordered a soup and I'm having something called chairo cusqueño. And if you have a look down over here, it's basically a soup with lamb and Andean grains. I'm not sure what kind of grains those would be. Kind of looks like barley. Um, there might be some quinoa in there. I don't really know, but it's really hearty and you can see it has potatoes and carrots and celery and it looks really, really good. So let's try it. Mmm. Oh wow. That's like a nice, thick, flavorful soup. Um, can't really tell what these little green leaves are. I wonder if it's parsley or cilantro. Mmm. But it's really nice. I like that it has a really a thick texture because of the potato that breaks apart and then you obviously have the grains and the meat. I still haven't tried the meat. Here's my lamb. So yeah, that is really nice. It's the kind of dish you want to order on a really cold day to warm you up. I like that it's um, served in a nice cute little bowl. You can warm up your hands. <laughs> I'm a little bit chilly in case you can't tell. So yeah, good soup. And you ordered something called pachapapa and we're not entirely sure if that's the name that the restaurant gave to the meal or if that's really what the meal is called in this, <laughs> yeah, in this part of Peru. We have no idea. We just came <laughs> to this restaurant, ordered it on a whim. And so what I'm thrilled about is if we take a look at our, my plate, uh -huh. is that I've got a lot of different stuff going on. I've got oh, a yeah. salad, I've got the meat, I've got the tamale, I've got potatoes covered in cheese, uh -huh. and I have some kind of stuffed pepper. But... Being the carnivore that I am, I think I will try the meat first. And can you tell us what kind of meat this is? Because it's not beef. Yeah. It is alpaca it is? meat. Alpaca, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> so, pretty special. So, dig in. I've never tried alpaca before. Mm. Does it taste like beef? Chicken or fish? It tastes something like kind of in between chicken and beef. Mm -hmm. This particular cut is really tender and has a lot of seasonings on it, so it's quite good. It's not as gamey as I thought it would be. Alright, time to try my tamale. And the tamale is made with corn, mm. yellow corn. Mm. What's in there? What's in there? That's, that's one of the best tamales I've ever had. I think it's got, yeah, it's got cheese in there. Mm. Oh my, I'm getting that food envy all of a sudden. So good. You better hope I share with you. <laughs> Okay, so my kind husband is willing to share the stuffed pepper, which I was told has beef and vegetables and melted cheese on top. So let's take a good chunk. 
since he's in the mood to share. It's not so much I'm in the mood to share, I'm just not sure if I can use it all myself. Mm. That's like ground beef. And man, that's actually spicy. My tongue is on fire right now. Mmm. But it's tasty, obviously, because I'm still chewing. Yeah, nice. I like that you have a very full plate and you get to sample a little bit of everything. So we tried to make this as authentic of a meal in Cusco as we possibly could, so I got my Cuscania beer. Museum, which is a bit unusual. It's not exactly a museum in the sense that you walk around and look at Pisco bottles or anything like that. It's more like a bar and you come here to drink Pisco. So we just placed our order and we're waiting for our drinks to arrive. So we had a special happening at the bar so we ordered four glasses of Chilcanos which are made with Pisco, ginger ale and a few drops of bitter and we were able to choose different flavors. So we have strawberry, cinnamon, this is a classic, and this one is the one that you like. What is that, licorice? Anise. 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 All right. Let's start drinking. Okay, so first up, the classic. That's good, okay. I can taste the alcohol, but it's not so strong that it's like burning my throat. It's like a nice summery drink. Very good. Bottoms up for Samuel Jeffrey. Yeah, and I'm trying one of my favorite ones, Anise, so I have high expectations. High expectations, he said. And unlike your strawberry, the Anise is strongly, strongly flavorful here. Ooh, that means I would not like it. <laughs> that means I won't be sharing this one at all. And now for a sip of the strawberry. It doesn't have a strong strawberry flavor. I don't know if they've added like a syrup or if it's natural fruit. I mean, there's one little piece of strawberry in there, but I don't think that's flavoring the whole glass. Yeah, a nice girly drink. And the last one for me to try here is cinnamon flavored. Okay, that one's not nearly as strongly as flavoring, so it needs for the win. Plaza de Armas is the beating heart of Cusco. The square is flanked by a Jesuit church and cathedral, and there are also plenty of bars, restaurants, and tour agencies around the perimeter. During the day, you'll find locals and tourists hanging out in the square, and if you get lucky, you might just encounter a performance followed by a demonstration like we did. The Inca Museum is one of the main museums in town and it has rooms dedicated to different periods of Inca and Spanish history. You can also see women weaving rugs and tapestries by hand in the central courtyard. So we somehow ended up at the Chocolate Museum in Cusco. It's very small but you can learn the history of how chocolate is made and the whole process. And they also have like these little beans. Apparently that's what cocoa beans look like. Who knew? I'm kind of hoping they have chocolate that we can sample somewhere, but I haven't come across that yet. Fingers crossed. So did you get to try any chocolates? No free samples, but they have a cool place in the store where you can purchase chocolate and they also have a cafe as well. And they have lots of interesting flavors, like there's spicy chocolate, cinnamon chocolate, yeah. coca leaf chocolate, a bit of everything. If you have any chocolate lovers in your family or as amongst friends, mm -hmm. definitely a good gift to pick up here. Great souvenir. Coricancha was an Inca temple built to the sun god Inti, and it is believed that the walls of this temple were once covered in sheets of gold. If the temple looks like it has various layers of construction, that's because when the Spaniards arrived, they demolished the original temple and used the foundations to build the church of Santo Domingo on the site. The Church of the Society of Jesus is a historic Jesuit church. It's worth a quick visit if you're in the area. So 
time to spew off a few facts about guinea pig. Yeah, so the kui is something we've been wanting to try for a while now. Mm -hmm. It is one of the most traditional Peruvian foods you can possibly get. It originates from the Andes. It's a rodent. And apparently the meat is very high in protein and low in cholesterol. So it's healthy for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who would have known? This is a perfect meal to have just before our hike to Machu Picchu. Yeah. So another fun fact, because I know you guys really like those, is that if you visit Cusco Cathedral, once you go inside, you'll see that there's a painting of Jesus and the 12 disciples enjoying their last supper. And guess what they're eating? It's a guinea pig and it's lying on its back with its little paws up in the air. So if guinea pig is good enough for Jesus and his disciples, we can certainly eat it while we're in Cusco. And they were kind enough to let us go take a look at how it's being cooked and prepared. So let's go walk over and check out the wood fire burning oven. Just over there, just over there. That's where our kui is being made. Dinner has arrived and I'm trying not to look at the guinea pig in the face because it kind of reminds me of my sister's two pet chinchillas. But there it is on the plate and it comes with a few sides. So if you look down here, you can see that we have some golden potatoes, some fried, fried yellow potato actually. And we have a little salad and we also have a stuffed pepper with cheese melted over top. So yes, I guess the next step is to dig into our kui. So our server has kindly chopped up the kui because we didn't really know where to begin and apparently you have to eat this with your hands. Yes, so I'm going to grab just a chunk here mm. and it's time for the first bite. Is that like the back? Kind of good. To tell. The meat's quite tender. You know what? It, it tastes it tastes a lot like chicken. Hmm. If I didn't know what I was eating, I would have guessed it was chicken. That's good to know. Makes me feel a little better about taking my first bite. <laughs> I think I have the back and the hind leg. I'm just taking little nibbles. Aww. How's it taste? It's like stringy, chewy chicken. Yeah. Like, it even looks like chicken, like the dark meat on a chicken. So, you could fool me, but I've seen the whole guinea pig on the plate. So now I know what I'm having. And you just kind of have to get over that because it doesn't make a bit of an impression on you. Especially if you have chinchillas for pets because they just look so similar. So moving on, we're kind of, you know, uh, taking a bite of its midsection here. Okay. So what, what you really notice about when you have guinea pig is that the skin is really crispy, mm -hmm. but the meat inside is quite tender. And I actually like it. We're also noticing that there are some organs and bones and yeah, yeah, like it's it, strange it, things inside our kui. It's very much cooked as it is and yes. uh, you eat it as it's presented. Yes. That is how you have kui in Peru. Except you're using cutlery instead of your hands. You have it all, all wrong. Right. That's right. So now the verdict. If you saw kui on a menu, would you order it again? I'm not necessarily sure I would, just because it is a bit expensive and I think that if you were to have something like chicken or something, you might get a little bit more meat, but I'm really glad I tried it. It tasted honestly better than I expected mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, if you're in Peru, definitely try it though at least once. And your final verdict? Well, it didn't taste bad, but that being said, I'm not sure I would eat it again. I just don't like seeing the whole animal on my plate and I know that's kind of silly to say because I do eat meat, I do eat fish, so it doesn't make sense to just eliminate guinea pig, but yeah, not for me, not for me. Templo de la Merced is another church located one block from Plaza de Armas and it contains the tomb of two famous conquistadors.
nighttime here in Cusco and it's time for a drink. What are you sipping on? Just sipping on my Pisco Sour, enjoying the nightlife here in Cusco. Mmm, looks like a good drink. And that's a wrap for Cusco. We hope you enjoyed this video and that it showed you a few of the places you can visit while you're in the city. We recommend spending at least three days here or perhaps a few more if you also want to tour the Sacred Valley. As always, if you have any suggestions of things to do in Cusco, feel free to share those in the comments below. taking a really fun overnight trip from Puno today to visit Lake Titicaca. Yeah, we're gonna visit several islands and yeah. do a homestay overnight. Yeah, and get to meet the different communities that live here because we have Aymara people and Quechua people. So we've just arrived at our first island and this one is called Corazón del Lago, which means the heart of the lake. And this is an Aymara community that lives on a floating reed island. So let's have a look around. Let's check it out. So it's a bit of a strange sensation walking on the Reed Islands because it's not solid ground and your feet do sink in a little bit, but not to the point where you feel like you're going to fall through and, you know, go in the water, but still kind of interesting. So what have we learned so far on this floating reed island? So we're visiting the Uros floating reed islands and there's approximately 80 to 90 of them. And the people who originally came here were escaping hostile neighbors. Mm -hmm. So this is quite a secluded environment for them. Yeah, exactly. And also we learned that they don't really know like exactly how many islands they have here because they're constantly like cutting them up if they have yeah. any problems with their neighbors. Yeah, and if there's a new divorce islands. or if there's problems with neighbors, they just <laughs> Slash the island up. Yep. Sam, time to take the taxi to the neighboring island. Oh yeah. Got a pretty sweet ride. So is this the coolest taxi you've ever been on or what? Pretty much. I can't think of any taxi that is quite like this. Yeah. And I don't think I've been on too many water taxis before either. <laughs> and it is moving. Yes. a nice new addition in your passport right next to your Machu Picchu stamp. I sure do. So one of the cool things you can do on the floating islands is get a stamp of Lake Titicaca right there. Another one for the collection. I've got Machu Picchu on top. I got that one a few days ago. So I'm filling up my passport quite nicely. our third island of the day. This one is called Amantani and this island is actually home to Quechua people whereas the first two that we visited were home to the Aymara people. So we will be doing a homestay here and spending the night 
and right now we are walking towards our home so let's keep going so aside from meeting our host families what i'm most excited for is food because yes. it's already lunchtime. It's a little bit past our lunchtime, actually. And we forgot to pack snacks. Yeah. So I'm starving. So before we settle in, we're gonna go get some local food. Yeah, and apparently they're a vegetarian on this island. So we're going to be having a quinoa soup and then just like potatoes and roots and different vegetables. Cheese and stuff like that. Cheese, yes. So should be good. Okay, a little bit out of breath? Yeah, a little bit out of breath. We're still feeling the altitude. Actually, Lake Titicaca is higher than Cusco, if you can believe that. And we are walking uphill, so keep going. Yeah. our homestay for the night. We have a very colorful room, a little sofa, and we have beautiful views of Lake Titicaca. Come show us those Ta views. Look at how blue that water is. Wowzers. Awesome. So what kind of tea are we having, Audrey? We are having Munya tea, which is a local herb that should help us with a high altitude. So we're just breaking some leaves into the cup and adding hot water. Sopa de quinoa. Ah, sopa de quinoa. Quinoa sopa. Oh, que rico. Yeah. Okay, so it is meal time at our local homestay. What are you having today? I'm having quinoa soup for lunch. So let's mm -hmm. take a look at this. And you can see there's a lot of quinoa. There's and also potatoes. carrots and potatoes, and it's piping hot just came straight from the pot. So let's try that. Mm. Oh, so good. I'm so hungry and this just really hits the spot. Well, now that we're done our soup, what's next? So this is our main. We are having rice, potatoes, fried cheese, and a little salad on the side. So it looks good, nice vegetarian meal. stay on this island your best bet is to do a homestay and what's awesome is that they have this uh, sharing system so that each family has an opportunity to host different international guests all right so we had our lunch we had our siesta and now we're climbing to the top of the island to watch the sunset. I've also got a bit of munya in my hand to help me get to the top. It's feeling so that deep. oxygen? Are you so feeling deep. that oxygen? The lack of oxygen, that's what I'm feeling. But anyways, <laughs> our group is way ahead, so we better start climbing. Your famous last words. <laughs> what bit you today? A plant bit me. No, I was stung by something called the stinging plant and it stung my middle finger. Let's, let's see, and now, let's see the wound. That's the thing, you can't see a wound, but they told me it's going to burn for the next 10 minutes. My middle finger is on fire. It almost looks like rice patties. So there's two lookout points you can choose from. To the right, there's Pachamamba, and that's the one that we're choosing. Pachamama. 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 Through the gate. 
through the gate. Mama, how are the views? Oh, we sure did. The views are insane here. It's almost like you're touching the clouds. It's like you can reach up and touch them. Yeah, and the weather has changed quite yeah. drastically. We went from t-shirts like, to... I'm not kidding. Five minutes up. ago, I was wearing a t-shirt. Now I'm bundled up in a sweater and I have a jacket on as well and, and a warm hat. You. All right, so I think we're going to be heading down soon. Time for dinner and perhaps a little celebration in town. Dance moves. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's bringing them. <laughs> so we're all dressed up, we've had our dinner, and now it's time to go to the party, and we are dressed up in traditional outfits. Party! Uh -huh. <laughs> so are you getting altered over here? Yes. You gotta wear it's it probably right. probably up higher, right? Yes. Hike it up higher. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> morning we are feeling well rested from last night's party I don't know about you Sam but I slept really well like a log with that fresh country air yep so yeah we're well rested we're going to have breakfast now I hear pancakes are on the menu and then after that we'll be saying goodbye to our homestay family and leaving the island and going to visit yet another island so yeah we've got a full day ahead and let's go eat cuz I'm hungry for pancakes Day and we are visiting a new island. Yes, this is our last stop on Lake mm -hmm. Titicaca. This is Tequila Island and we're yes. just going to take a wander around and see what we find. Yes, maybe we'll find our guide and she can tell us a bit of the history of the place. Let's go find her. couldn't possibly get any steeper it does I'm still out of breath because of the high altitude here and we need to climb a bit further so let's go this island is that the men are responsible for the knitting instead of the women so we're just gonna head into their little studio and see them at work Chug, 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 chug. 
Doug, you can hear the boat's engine. Sure so can. we have spent the last two days traveling around Lake Titicaca and visiting some of the different islands and the communities that live there. And yeah, we hope you enjoyed this video and you got a little taste of the region. We really had a great time here. And I think that wraps up our video. It does. And one more thing to add is that if you do have the time, make sure you do a several day tour. If you were to try to do it all in one day, that would be super rushed. Yeah. Ta-ta! Ta-ta! Many travelers to Peru tend to skip over Lima as they rush off to more scenic destinations, but we're of the opinion that the capital has a lot to offer. As one of the largest cities in South America, Lima can be a little chaotic and crowded, but it is also full of surprises, especially in terms of culinary experiences and historic attractions. In this travel video guide, we're going to take you on a tour of the city and show you 30 things to do in Lima, Peru. Now let's get started! Currently at the Love Park, and are you feeling the love? I'm feeling the love. Plant went on here, then. Oh, yeah. Let's show there you around. We go. Mm -hmm. The Love Park is a beautiful park located in the neighborhood of Miraflores that looks out onto the Pacific Ocean. Due to its name, it's a popular spot with couples out on a date, especially around sunset when you get spectacular views. If you're up for a little bit of adventure, you can also go paragliding. You don't need to have any experience since they offer tandem flights. And even if this doesn't seem like your type of activity, it's still pretty cool to go as a spectator to watch people take off the cliff. often whenever we're in Lima. This place is called Punto Azul and they make a delicious ceviche and some pretty tasty dishes that we're going to be sampling today. We're actually ordering all of our favorite dishes at this restaurant so it should be a tasty meal. every time I come to Punto Azul ceviche and that has just arrived over here. This is just the classic ceviche. It's only fish, no other seafood in there. And we've got our red onions. I also asked for it spicy so you can see the red peppers here. It's kind of been crushed but you still get some big chunks. Um, you have your sweet potato, fresh corn and of course the tiger's milk which is basically like a, a lemon base that helps cure the fish. So yeah, this is my absolute favorite. I never get sick of ceviche. My mouth just waters thinking about it. Oh my gosh. So let's dig in. Let's try it. Let's grab some onions in there as well. Oh, it's just so good. Mm. Wow. I just love all the flavors in your mouth, like it's so sour and tart. And then you've got your sweet potato to kind of help balance that. It's just perfection. The perfect meal in Lima. Hands down, my favorite Peruvian dish. Love it. And now it's time for your favorite. Yes, and you can come to Punto Azul and not indulge in the seafood, but I'm trying something that's kind of unique to here, and that is the shrimp cheese risotto. Ooh. And guys, this is to die for. Like, look at that. You can't look at how cheesy that is. I'm grabbing a nice big shrimp here. So creamy. So creamy. This rivals the risottos you find in Italy. Oh, I kid you not. Watch I kid you not. Italy. <laughs> Just so, so, so cheesy. And then you have the shrimp, and then you have all the different seasonings. Like, to me, 
This is this is my favorite dish. Yeah. In Lima right now. I don't think you got a shrimp. Let's grab an even bigger yes, one. Yes, I did, but I'm getting a bigger one this time. Mm. Awesome. For a little bit of magic, another fun activity to try at night is to go to Parque de la Reserva for their water circuit and light show. It's a popular activity with families, but it can be enjoyed by all ages. So, dinner time here in Lima, and tonight we are going out for anticuchos, which are cow hearts. I know this sounds a little bit unusual, but it's actually really tasty. So we've come to a popular place. It's called Lagrimanesa. We've already placed our order. Let's go get our cow heart. So this place that we're visiting, it actually started as a little street stand. So the woman who opened the restaurant used to have a little cart and she used to sell her anticuchos on the street and she had a super long line because her food was delicious and so she was really popular. Um, and eventually she was able to save up enough money to open her little restaurant here in the neighborhood. So yeah, humble beginnings, but you know, the recipe was great. So here we are today. So here we have it, the star of the meal. This is my anticucho. It doesn't really look like a cow's heart in my opinion. I mean, you can fool me and tell me this is steak. But I'm gonna have my first bite. I'm not sure how to do this. Honestly, it's a fairly tender meat. It doesn't have a lot of fat. It could pass off as steak. Like, if no one told you this is a cow's heart, you would never know. Your turn. Time for my first bite. I'm gonna try some of the sauces here. I think we've got a red spicy one and a green, and a green spicy one. one. Oh, that's so so good. And that is really spicy sauce. Wow. Yeah. You know the meat is really well seasoned, so it takes on the flavor of. Or whatever they've used, like it does, it, the heart doesn't taste like an organ or, or anything I know, unusual. Exactly. Normally, when I have organs, they're really tough and chewy, but this is yeah. as tender of meat as you're gonna find. out Barranco which is a very artsy neighborhood apparently this used to be like a bohemian hangout back in the 60s so we're just gonna explore on foot we don't really know what to expect but so far we are seeing lots of street art and it looks pretty cool I've been walking around Barranco for a while and we have finally come across the main attraction in this neighborhood. We are standing in front of the Bridge of Sighs, a really romantic spot for young couples. Apparently this bridge has made lots of appearances in Peruvian songs and poetry. So yeah, lots of romance happening over here. Let's take a walk. introduction to Barranco. What did you think of the place? Yeah, this neighborhood is a fun artsy kind of area. We only spent a couple hours here in the afternoon. It would be really cool to come at night and see what the nightlife is all about. Yeah, they have lots of bars and restaurants worth checking out. Yeah, it definitely seems that way. Yes. Huacapuclana is a giant adobe and clay pyramid located in the middle of Miraflores. Since this site is still under excavation, you can only visit accompanied by a guide. But this is a good thing since you end up learning a lot of the history and culture behind this place. For today's meal, we're going for more of an upscale dining experience. 
we were having lunch at a place called La Rosa Nautica, which means the nautical rose. And it's a really cool restaurant out on the water. There's this pier built over the ocean and it just leads you all the way to this little restaurant. So you're like surrounded by waves, there's surfers, birds, perfect setting and the food here is really good. I've been here once before many, many years ago. So I'm excited to come back with more mature taste buds. Being the foodies that we are, we made sure to order two different sampler plates so that we could try a little bit of everything. We ended up having three different types of ceviche as well as causa, lomo saltado, taku taku and more. If you're looking for a fancy meal out, this place is it. Largo Mar is a shopping center with the best views in all of Lima. The place was built into the cliff overlooking the ocean and it has cafes and restaurants with outdoor seating areas. In terms of shopping, most of the brands here are on the higher end and the prices reflect so. So it's a super hot summer day here in Lima, so Sam and I have stopped off for cremoladas, which is kind of like a, a shaved ice drink. And I've gotten one that's flavored like passion fruit. So it's nice and sour. And what's that called locally? Mm. This is maracuya, and it's so good. Like, we are dripping sweat right now, so this nice frozen drink is exactly what we need. Mm -hmm. And for yours? And I'm having my favorite cremolata. It's called lucuma. It's a local fruit to Peru, and I haven't had it anywhere else in the world. It is absolutely delicious. That's good stuff, isn't it? There's Ooh, no better way yeah. to cool off. <laughs> Another activity you can try in Lima is surfing. There are lots of surf shops along the water, so it's just a matter of inquiring about rates for surf lessons and board rentals. So for today's lunch, we're eating at a place called Daiken and they specialize in Nikkei food. Now this is something that I hadn't heard of until I came to Peru, but apparently Peru has the second largest Japanese population in all of South America and that's really influenced the cuisine. So Nikkei is the combination of Peruvian and Japanese culinary inspiration. So yeah, we're going to be trying some Japanese Peruvian food today. Okay, so this right here is Pejere Tempura. Tempura time. Yeah. And this is basically the, the local catch, mm -hmm. which is which makes it Nikkei. And this sauce is really unique because normally when I've had a dipping sauce, like when I'm having Japanese food, it's mm -hmm. typically cold. And this this is piping hot. You can actually really? see the steam coming off of it. <laughs> Butterfingers over here. Butterfingers over here. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> We're gonna attempt to save this here. <laughs> you know, whenever I've had tempura at a Japanese restaurant, it's always been vegetables. This is amazing. Like, this is this almost reminds me a little bit, like, sort of, of like fish and chips, except it's a lot thinner. Mm -hmm. No, it's just so tasty. The tempura batter is really, really good, and then the fish is really fresh. So yeah, typically when I've had tempura too, it tends to be something like sweet potato or other kinds of vegetables. Mm -hmm. Wow, does it ever taste delicious in fish form. In fish form. So it's basically deep fried fish in a batter. Basically. Is that what you're telling us? That's basically Let's what I'm get saying. Let's a closer look. Hmm. Interesting. Are you gonna eat it? <laughs> there you go. Next up, we're going to dig into the, the maki rolls. And this one right here has breaded shrimp and avocado and a little bit of fish on top. And I'm not entirely sure what the sauce or the powder is. Let's maybe dip it in a bit of soy. 
Mmm. Oh wow. Tasty. And that's really nice. Okay. One second to chew this. So when we ordered this one off the menu, we saw that it said a cevichalo, which kind of sounds like ceviche. And if you try this fish, you'll be able to tell that it's been cured in lime. And it just has like a very zesty, fresh flavor. You actually don't even need the soy sauce because it's so flavorful on its own. And I'm still not entirely sure about the green powder, but I do like it. So yeah, that's like a really interesting twist on on sushi because you have the, the ceviche influence coming through. So pretty cool. Plaza Mayor, also known as Plaza de Armas, is located in the city center. The square is flanked by many historic buildings and if you're looking for colonial architecture, this is the place to find it. The San Francisco Monastery is located just a few blocks away from the main plaza and it's another site you won't want to miss. You can only visit as part of a guided tour, but inside you'll find a library with antique texts paintings from the days of the early colony, and catacombs which contain thousands of skulls and bones. So it is time for another lunch video here in Lima. Today we're filming downtown, so we popped into one of the few restaurants that was willing to serve us lunch at 11 a.m. because we're already starved, and you know, when we're hungry, we get hangry. So here we are. We're going to be filming a video about Ocopa Arequipeña y Papa La Huancaina. Both are potato dishes served with sauces which are kind of similar but from different regions, so we'll be sampling those. So the dish Sam is trying, Papa La Huancaina, originated in the province of Huancayo, and that's how it gets its name. Yeah, so let's talk about the ingredients here. So the main thing here is the sauce. I mean, of course this is a potato dish, but this is a sauce that is made out of cheese, milk, and ricotto. And, and ricotto, that's the yellow ají pepper. Yeah, exactly. And this is something we're very familiar with because it's often served at your aunt's and grandma's house. So yes, you've we been love this a lot dish. Of that, huh? <laughs> Stuff. This is easily one of my favorite Peruvian dishes. Like, yeah. I just love the sauce. And then Peruvian potatoes are, are some of the best in the world. So it's like you're combining this amazing sauce on top of mm -hmm. really well prepared potatoes. It's amazing. And the cool thing about this dish is that you can find it just about everywhere in Peru. You can find this along the coast, in the Sierras, and even in the jungle. So yeah. And speaking of presentation, this is usually served with black olives and hard-boiled eggs. And, and these are look, small ones. I think these are quail eggs. These are quite we've got them here. Little. Do you like it? Oh yeah. Maybe I won't be sharing after all. So it is now time to try the second potato dish, and that is a copa arequipeña. If you have a look here, we can see the plate. And it's a little bit different from the previous one. This sauce is a little bit more green, but it is still served with the hard-boiled eggs and the, the black olives. And the two main ingredients to make this sauce are ají and huacatay. No idea what huacatay is. I've never seen this before. No clue. Not very familiar with, with the food here in Peru. Um, but aside from that, the sauce also has a bit of onions, garlic, milk, fresh cheese, some crumbled crackers and peanuts. So it should be a bit more crunchy than the one we had earlier. So I'm gonna grab a spoon here. So time to serve yourself. Help myself. Serve yourself up. Some of that. There we go. Let's grab a bit more sauce so we can really taste it. All right, time to dig in. Yeah. Oh, and one thing worth noting, if you don't want to go through the trouble of making the sauce from scratch, you can go to the supermarket here in Peru and they sell these little packs that have the powder already pre-made and you just have to like add a little bit of milk and water and voila! Instant sauce out of a bag! Well, let's try this. Mm. 
Yeah, so this one's a bit sweeter than the one we had earlier. A lot sweeter, actually. A lot sweeter? Yeah. Wow. In the past, when I've had it at my family's place, it's a bit more crunchy. Because I guess they, they don't really chop their peanuts that, that finely, so you can still kind of taste them. But this one, it's very smooth and very creamy. And it's a bit spicier than the one kaina we had earlier. So kind of spicy and sweet. It's good. It's good, but I still prefer papa no one kaina. That's just a classic. Another place to visit in Lima's historic center is the main cathedral. They offer a guided tour which is very informative and you can also climb down into the crypt beneath the church. Just down the street from the cathedral, you'll find the government palace. If you time your visit just right, you'll be able to watch the changing of the guard. Unfortunately, we have just missed it. past 12 noon, which I think means it's acceptable to get a little boozy. We are going to be doing a taste test of Pisco Sour versus Chilcano. Both drinks are made with Pisco, but they're quite different, so those should be coming soon. So the cocktail has arrived. This is the Pisco Sour. Yes. And this is my all-time favorite Peruvian drink. Mm. It's amazing. Can't wait to try it here. So, how does it taste? As you might imagine, sour, but also <laughs> quite sweet. Yeah. So, the Pisco Sour is made from a number of different ingredients. So, you've got your grape brandy, the Pisco, which actually comes from the town of Pisco here in Peru. Yeah. Then you've got your egg white on top. If you take a look down here, you've got your egg white on top, a little bit of bitter, which nice is the brown. Nice and frothy, look at that. Nice and frothy, yes, that's the key. And then here you also have lemon or lime juice and often a little bit of syrup added to give it some extra bit of sugar and extra bit of sweet. So that is one very sweet cocktail, very refreshing on a hot day. Yeah, and this is considered the national drink of Peru. Mixing it all up with my little seahorse. So I ordered the Chilicano and this is a cocktail that is made with pisco, ginger ale and a little bit of lime juice. There's oh. a hair, there's a hair. You know who would really like this? It would be my mom. She loves ginger ale. Oh, that's a little stronger than I was expecting. Potent. 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 Oh, I was hoping it would be a little bit watered down with all the ice cubes, but no. <laughs> that's definitely got pisco in there and you can taste it. Burns on the way down. I might need to help you out with that one, huh? Mm. Actually, the first time we tried Chilicanos, it was in Cusco. We thought we were going to a Pisco museum, but we got there and it was actually more like a bar. So we ordered, I think it was like four different Chilcanos with different flavors. So that was pretty cool. This one that I'm having right now is just the classic, basically ginger ale, lime and Pisco. But you can get fancy and like make strawberry ones, cinnamon ones, and just, you know, different flavors. So one of our favorite things to do in Lima whenever we're in the city is to come to Kennedy Park and they have so many street cats that are taken care of by the locals. You can buy a little bit of cat food and feed them and play with them and they're all really friendly. For us, the cats are the main attraction. However, aside from that, the park also hosts an outdoor hippie fair which is worth checking out. That or just go play with the cats. Arrived. 
Yeah, we've got our fan called Chicharron. It's looking good. It looks amazing. If you look down here, you really get a good tour of what we have. So we've got the bun yes. inside. It looks like Ooh. we've got lots of onion. I'm guessing it's sweet onion. Yeah. Then we have the fried pork. Fried pork. And then the camote, the sweet potato. Exactly. So that uh, looks like a pretty awesome sandwich. Let's try it now. Yes. Wait. Is it ready? That's an unusual ingredient, but it works, doesn't it? It does. Lima's Mercado Indio is located along Petituars, and this is where visitors can come to do all their souvenir shopping. Whether it's alpaca sweaters, chess sets, warm slippers, or silver jewelry you're after, you can find it all here. Time again here in Lima, and today we are going to be trying a traditional dish called ají de gallina. This is probably like one of those national dishes that you can find at almost any restaurant, but we're eating it at a place called República, which makes Peruvian dishes, but kind of like in a casual fast food setting. So yeah, should be interesting. We've placed our order, and that should be coming soon. already here that came very quickly so let's have a look at the plate this is ají de gallina and as you can see it's kind of like a chicken stew it's made with a shredded chicken and the sauce has a cream cheese and peanut base and also the way they thicken this sauce is by adding breadcrumbs that have been soaked in either a broth or milk and this is served with rice or boiled potatoes, and the boiled potatoes are kind of hiding underneath all the chicken oh, here. Oh, we do have boiled potatoes. We I, do, I thought yeah. we were just given rice. So this is a very hearty meal. I'm kind of glad we're just sharing one plate because there's no way I could eat all of this. Um, but yeah, let's dig right in. I'm just gonna try it with rice here. Look at that, this looks so good. This is one of my favorite ways that chicken is prepared here in mm. Peru. Like, I wow. love this dish. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I forgot to mention this, but another key ingredient is ashi, the hot pepper. But because it has a cream base, it's not super spicy. So I really love this. And look, they actually gave us a heat sauce too. Mm -hmm. In case we want it spicier, maybe we should add a little bit. In case there wasn't enough, yeah, just dunk it all over that rice. I'm not sure if that's how it's done, but that's what I'm That's doing. how we do it. <laughs> So let's see if that has more kick now. Another quality control bite here. Quality control, that's what we call it. Mm. Now it's spicier, that's good. Nice and creamy mm. too. Feel the burn! <laughs> Lima's beaches are very pebbly and the waters are rather cold, but that doesn't keep beachgoers away. If you just want to sunbathe or cool off with a quick dip, the beaches fit the bill. Today's lunch in Lima, we are going to be having chifa, and that's basically Chinese food with a Peruvian twist. So you know how we always visit a country, maybe even Canada or the US, and you go to a Chinese buffet and you're like, mmm, this is delicious. And then you go to China and you can't find any of the dishes you've had at a Chinese buffet? That's because Chinese food really varies from one country to the next because people incorporate, you know, their spices and their cooking styles. So Peruvian Chinese food is quite distinct. We're gonna be eating chifa, which literally means to eat rice. So yeah, we've ordered a lot of food. That's gonna be coming soon. And it should be interesting, Peruvian Chinese food. 
Apparently, there are more than 6,000 Shifa restaurants spread out across Lima, so we can assure you that you won't have any trouble finding one. On the contrary, it might be kind of hard to choose just one. If you want to see what a local market looks like, head over to Mercado de Surquillo. You'll find lots of fresh produce here and it's particularly busy if you come in the early morning. They also have little stands where you can grab a bite if you get hungry. So for today's video, we're at a place called Sanguchisimo and we're going to be eating salchipapas by popular demand. We had all these people being like, if you're in Lima, you have to eat Sanchi Papa. So we listened to you, we tracked down this place, and we're excited to be trying this dish. So our Chori Papa and Salchi Papa have arrived. We've got the sausage one and the hot dog one. Look at those portions. That is a thing of beauty. And this is a street food snack that originated in the streets of Lima, but now it has spread all over Latin America, so you can find it in other countries, which is pretty cool. Different variations everywhere. And it comes with four different sauces that we've got here on this plate. We've got ketchup, mayo, mustard, and of course, ají. I think is, the ají is my favorite one. Yes, mine too. So we may need to ask for an extra container. And this is like a really nice spicy sauce that you'll find almost everywhere in Peru. It's always a staple at the table. So yeah, really looking forward to digging into this. It looks fantastic. So let's just go for it. So on top here we wow, have... look at all that cheese. Yeah, that's a lot of cheese and some fried egg as well. And when we were placing our order, they asked us, do you want your egg like well fried or do you want it a little bit runny? And there's nothing that grosses out Sam more than runny eggs, so we got ours well done, sunny side up. So yeah, I kind of like <laughs> my eggs are, runny. I, I like them juicy. I don't like my runny eggs. It just it grosses me out when, yeah. when the yolk bursts and it's just yeah. Like, yeah. Sam's always like, take it away. I can't look at the plate. Take it away. But anyways, I've got a little bit of everything on here. My French fry, my hot dog, my egg. Dip it into a sauce. And yes, let's dip it into Almost ice cream. Almost forgot that. Can't forget yeah, that. Load up on that ahi. That's a massive bite. Mm, it's hot. Mmm. 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 Wow. That's good. Give me one minute. This is wonderful. If I were a kid, I feel like I would want to eat this every day. I'd be like, Mom, please, Sanchi Papa for lunch. <laughs> it's really good. It's really hot. I just burned my mouth when I took that first bite. But look at that. Yeah, it's, it's, got, just, a lo it's got a lot of ingredients that kids would love. I mean, yeah. You've got your french fries, you've got your cheese, you've got your eggs, you've got your hot dog, you've got your nice sauces. That's, uh, that's ticking off a lot of boxes for sure. It's wonderful. And I have to say, the, the ahi at this restaurant is actually really spicy. Which is <laughs> the good. spiciest I've had. <laughs> so right now we are visiting Park Maria Reiche, which is a really cool park where they recreated the Nazca lines using flowers and different plants. So if you don't want to go all the way down to Nazca and you don't want to fly in one of those tiny planes, you can come here and kind of get an idea of what the Nazca lines look like. I mean, these are obviously much smaller. If you have a bit of a sweet tooth, you'll certainly enjoy diving into Peruvian desserts. There are a few classics that you simply shouldn't miss, including Suspiro a la Limeña and Merengado de Chirimoya. Another fun way to experience the city is by bike. Head down to the boardwalk where you can hire a bicycle for a few hours and bike the length of the coast. So it is time for another food video and today we are going to be trying something that's called causa. 
Gausa, it's kind of like a shepherd's pie if you haven't tried it before. It's made with yellow mashed potato and you can get lots of different fillings. So we've ordered two different varieties and that should be coming soon and it's going to be delicious. I love Gausa. So the Gausa has arrived and it is a thing of beauty. How excited are you for your food, Sam? Yeah, it looks like artwork. I almost feel guilty talking into it. <laughs> almost. Almost. Okay, so let's talk about the key ingredients that make up Gausa. So you have your yellow potato, yep. um, lime, and ahi, which is the yellow hot pepper. Yep. And in terms of fillings, you can have lots of different ones. So Sam went with the classic, yeah. which has... Mine has chicken, and you can also see that there's uh, some avocado here on the avocado. side as well. So let's And that looks like some mayo, a mayo sauce on top. Alright, I'm just going to dig right in. Going right to the bottom. Ooh. It's like cutting into a tower. <laughs> wow, that is really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And with this particular gaza, it's really salty. You can tell they've added a lot of salt to it. But it's just like when you get that much yellow potatoes, it's just oh man, it's so good. It's almost like having like mum's mashed potatoes back <laughs> home or something but with much better dressings, you know, with the, with the chicken and the sauce and, and the avocado. Oh man, that's good. Okay, and let's talk about the chicken. Is it shredded chicken, like the one we had in Ajilina, yeah, or is it, it kind of chunky? No, it, 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 is, it is shredded chicken. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. One more bite for quality control. Research purposes. <laughs> that's good stuff. And I am beyond excited for mine because I saw causa acevichada on the menu and that is a ceviche causa. Look wow. at that. So I've got my my fish, a little bit of fish that's been kind of cooked in lime. I have my red onions, I have my hot chili peppers and of course my, my yellow mashed potato with a bit of mayo. Super fancy over there. I know there. and if you know how much I love ceviche, like this is just the perfect dish for me, really. You're doing a good job, job of uh, toppling it though already. I don't know why I'm blowing on my food. That's such a habit. I'm like, <laughs> it's cold. It's a cold dish. Mm. Oh yeah. The best of both it's worlds. So good. <laughs> the lime. There's so much lime. And it's so tangy. And a little spicy. And those little pieces of red hot chili. Mm. This is my favorite. I haven't even tried yours, but I know this is my favorite. Mm. And that is a wrap for the Peruvian capital. We had a wonderful time visiting Lima, and we hope that you'll consider adding this destination to your travel bucket list if you come to Peru. As always, if you have any other suggestions of delicious foods to try or cool things to do in Lima that we may not have mentioned, feel free to share those with travelers in the comments below. For more food and travel videos from around the world, be sure to hit subscribe. After spending some time in Lima, we flew into Iquitos for the final leg of our Peruvian adventure. The landscape changed from arid deserts to mountains and finally to jungle as our flight crossed the country. And once we arrived, the first thing we did was hop in a tuk-tuk to take us into the city. made it to Iquitos. We had some lunch, we had a nap, and it is now time to explore. But first up, we have to show you our hotel. It's called Hotel Epoca, and it's super cool. It's a colonial building with a cute terrace, and you just have to see it. So let's go. I know. So they have some cool historical photographs along here. Let me show you my favorite. This right here, Iquitos in the 1920s, flapper culture at its finest. How cool is that? And I like this one, fancy. Looks very posh, drinking coffee on the balcony. Iquitos is a really fascinating city. It is the largest city in the world that cannot be reached by road, which means that if you want to visit, you either have to take a plane or a boat to get there. For many, Iquitos is just a quick stopover en route to an Amazon river cruise or jungle stay. However, we were pretty excited to get to explore this colonial city. So, 
favorite part of the city so far is walking along the riverfront. Yes. We've got the Rio Amazonas just over there. And it's a really scenic walk. It is. It reminds us so much of Luang Prabang and yes. Laos. Yes. Like it's bringing us right back. It's mm -hmm. so similar. those engines purring. Yes, something that also reminds us so much of Southeast Asia is all the tuk-tuks. It is a city of tuk-tuks. You see motorcycles and rickshaw drivers everywhere. And right behind us is a really cool building. It's an iron house and that was built by Gustav Eiffel and brought piece by piece all the way from France in 1890. Wow. Or so rumor has it. There is little evidence tying Eiffel to this building, but the mystery keeps people visiting. We spent the rest of the afternoon just wandering around Iquitos on foot. We didn't have a map and we didn't have a guide, but we somehow managed to hit a lot of the main landmarks and then some. a pretty fun first half day of exploration we're really enjoying the town so far yes. and this is a place I have wanted to visit for such a long time because my grandma is actually from this area not from the city but from like a tiny little colony in the middle of the jungle that no longer even exists so I know it's pretty cool I, to be here. I feel like we have a much greater appreciation of where she's from and the kinds of food she's been eating because if you stay tuned to our channel, we're going to be filming a lot of food vlogs of all the regional cuisine from the Amazon. Yes. And right now, you can probably tell we're like sweating profusely. Yeah. So we found a little juice bar with a really great view and we're just going to wait for the sun to set. Yeah, and wait for our smoothies to arrive. feeling pretty awesome. I mean, we've had a really good start to our time here in Iquitos. I think we found our bearings and we've witnessed a really cool sunset. So tomorrow's a new day and we're going to explore a whole bunch more, hoping to visit maybe the Water Stilt Village tomorrow. We woke up this morning with the intention of filming the sunrise, but it was pouring rain. Pouring rain. So no sunrise whatsoever. Went back to bed, and now we're going for breakfast. Breakfast. And these are the views from our hotel. Yeah, and as you can see, it's still quite wet outside from the rain this morning. Some motorcycle and tuk-tuk traffic happening. And it appears we're not the only ones going for breakfast. There is like a dog and birds feasting on this huge pile of trash outside. They almost look like vultures, but I'm not sure they are. So this right here is our breakfast. We have some bread with jam and butter and scrambled eggs and fresh fruits, tea, coffee, juice. And I think Sam is extra excited because he's finally getting fresh fruits after how long? It's been a very long time. <laughs> it's been a while, huh? A long time. So it looks like you've got banana and watermelon and yep. papaya. And papaya. Ooh. Not a bad trio. So we're going 
going out for a little bit of sightseeing and Sam has undergone quite the transformation since breakfast. So I'm no longer Wolverine. I'm a little bit more clean shaven. I, every time I do this, I feel like a whole new man. Like I've just, I've got to come up with a better routine where I'm shaving like say once a week instead of once every six yeah, weeks. Yeah, plus it's a little too hot here to be yeah, sporting a, exactly. a beard. I, I had like the greasiest face of all time yesterday. Yeah. So I was like, there's time to make a change. So clean shaven and let's go check out the Still Village. Let's go. Belen, which is the little village on water still, so it's pretty cool. But what Sam and I are finding fascinating is little paths that lead off of this path. Like, we need to show you one place. It's basically this plank that you have to walk to reach your home. Yeah, and it's right nearby, so yeah. lead the way. And if you don't have good balance, you could totally fall over. I know I would. You know what? I'm getting sweaty palms just looking at like, this. Look at this. Can you imagine if that were the entrance to your home? That's like a foot and a half wide, if that, if that. Walk the plank, walk the plank. We ended up in a more residential area of Belen. However, there is a more touristy area where you can hire a pique pique boat to take you out on the water. While we didn't get to experience this, it could be a cool way to see the village from a different vantage point. How was our mission to find the banana chips, the chief lace? See? Ah, okay, okay. Por allá. Okay, you got to. Okay, we're gonna get them here. Okay, so apparently we found another spot to do it. Cool, so. Finding chief lace take two, right? Yeah. Ah, okay, está bien, está bien, gracias. So what's the deal? No chief lace, we're gonna keep looking. Puppy. Oh, puppy. Puppy. Oh. Meow, meow, slow food mouther. So next up, it's market time. I'm wishing I wore clothes shoes because it's looking pretty muddy and I've got foot flops. Audrey, what are you seeing so far? Mostly fresh produce, fruits and vegetables. Lots of colorful fruits. And I can smell cilantro in the air. We just went through a really busy market. Now we're heading back into a different section of the water still village. What's the little pup doing? What's it doing? in a treehouse lodge in the middle of the jungle and from there we're going to be cruising down the Amazon. Can't wait for that. So the adventures continue and we'll have many more videos to come. Yep. We 
staying in the coolest place ever. We have just arrived at the treehouse lodge in the middle of the Amazon jungle and we're going to be living in a treehouse for the next few days. So come along and I'm going to show you our personal private treehouse. This way, round the tree trunk. Come on. And our favorite part, closing the door. Yes, no one else is allowed in, just the two of us. Just the two of us. There we go. So now it is time for the grand tour. So this is the bed. I feel like I'm on an episode of MTV Cribs. This is the bed. Check it out. Yeah, Mosquito so net. net. Nice and big. Kind of has a jungle theme with the pillows and the We've blanket. already kind of made it messy. We have a chocolate we haven't had yet. Yeah. And, and let's... we have a little living area. There's all our luggage. All of our luggage. And what else can we show you? The bathroom. There is no door to the bathroom. And guys, just look at look at this tree trunk. I'm like going around it here. Yeah. There we go. So we've got our toilet on this side, a little glass sink, and then our shower stall just on the other side. That's pretty cool. And we're living in a tree house. We're living in a tree house. <laughs> Every kid's dream. Yes. Status update. Okay, well we still want to show you more of the property, but right now we're about to head out on a jungle walk. We're going to be looking for medicinal plants and learning about their uses. It also just started pouring rain, so that's gonna be interesting. But anyways, let's get going. We need to go. Go, go, go. Let's open our door. Open the trap door. Open sesame. Open oh, the trap door. That's heavy. It is time for our jungle expedition and we have to cross this bridge to get back to the main area. Right over here. Let's go meet our guide. So Sam, you look like you're ready for a jungle excursion. Show us your footwear. I've got a surprise. Check this out. Do -do 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 Ooh, he's ready. And this is probably the most awkward jig because these are about three times too big for me. Same here. I'm wearing 44 for men. It'll be fun. We'll make use of it. So this is the tallest treehouse of the property. Wow. Audrey. So this is Pichirina. Apparently it's the jungle's iodine and to me it smells like mango. No huele a mango? Se le siente el olor también? Si, no? To treat ringworm. Ringworm. So you just rub it? Mm -hmm. yeah. You use it. Look. Oh. Look. Put it in there. <laughs> and here is the leaf that is used to make the wane traditional food from the Amazon jungle here in Peru. This here is the blood mushroom. As you can see it's red and it is not edible guys. Don't you go eating it. Whistle for us. So we are back from the jungle excursion. Yeah, that jungle walk was awesome. We learned so much about all the different local plants and what they're used for in terms of different medicinal properties and yeah. also for food. And now we're off on a cool boat trip. We're just yeah. going to be cruising down the Amazon. And looking for pink dolphins. Yes, and maybe we'll stick around for sunset too. We'll see. <laughs> so here's our sweet ride. The Capitan. Capitano. Capitano. Señor Andrés.
So we just spotted a sloth up in the tree. We wouldn't have seen it if it wasn't for our guide though. So that's the end of day one. How are you feeling about sleeping in this treehouse? <laughs> it's awesome. I love the room. Um, we're exhausted. We had a really, really busy day. We it sure awesome. did. A lot of adventure. And tomorrow we're really looking forward to showing you more of the property and also doing a couple more tours as well. So yeah. Another busy day ahead. Can't wait for that to happen. Good night. Good Time night. to crawl into bed. Crawl into your little net. There it is. Little one. Well, good morning. It's the start of day two and it was sure rainy last night like thunderstorms the whole deal But that really added to the atmosphere So anyways, we're gonna go for breakfast and because it's wet not sure what we can do this morning But hopefully we can get out and do a couple excursions So it is 9 a.m. And we are back on the water and it is a beautiful morning to be out We're gonna try and spot some wildlife for a little excursion this morning and we've been traveling upstream and now we've arrived at a prime location to fish piranhas so Sam how are you feeling about that feeling good because you're gonna stick your fingers in and they're gonna bite them right What? <laughs> just kidding we actually have fishing rods and there's the wanna, bait I don't want to use my finger uh -huh. <laughs> so we're going to use this small fish <gasps> to be the piranha <laughs> uh, you want to kind of splash the water? That's the way how to attack the piranha. You know, splash in the water. You call the piranha. Come over! Okay, so I'm gonna try my hand at fishing for piranha. I've got the bait here. Right here. Let's do this. Oh, oh, I feel a tug. <laughs> no, they just ate half yeah, the they fish. They ate half the fish. Yeah. Oh, look! We got our first one! <laughs> look at that. Our first piranha. Look at the teeth on that sucker. Oh my gosh. I would not want to be bitten by one of those. What do you think, Audrey? That's scary. That's Looks scary. like something out of a horror movie. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> you got one! You got one! Show it to us! I finally caught one! It was a big one yeah. too! Oh, there Film it is. It. I Are am. It from here. Wow. It's going to move down water. Don't wow. Down. Check this out. <laughs> there you go. Dang. Sam's first piranha. Finally, it was Look like at that. Probably my 20th attempt, and I was not going to give up until I got one. <laughs> there it is. Congratulations. There it is. There's dinner. There's dinner. So, mission accomplished. Time to head back for lunch, but we're going to be having these for dinner. So, that's pretty exciting. So we just came back. Now it's time for lunch. So what are we having? We are having ceviche, our favorite as an appetizer. Wow, look at that. Look at that. The corn, of course. Mm. Dig right in. There we go. A nice big piece. Mm. Is that some good ceviche? Mm-hmm. I'm trying. So we are about to go on one more excursion this evening, but before we head out, we want to show you the rest of the property. So let's go in search of some tree houses. This way. We are now entering the bamboo forest. Sam, 
I think you lucked out with our tree house because we only have to cross one bridge. Yeah, but that bridge is kind of freaky for me. I think I would prefer the stairs. That's really the only difference between these two places. I also think this tree house is higher up than ours too. Ooh, vertigo. Bye. Oh! <gasps> Oh, are they fighting? All right, so Sam is going to feed a monkey. Yes, I've got my chunk of banana. Now time to throw it. Really good. Let's see, your best baseball swing. So right now, we are trekking through the mud in search of giant lily pads. As you can probably hear, it's pretty squishy. that was apparently rescued by a family when it was really young. Cool. So it lives with them in the house. Oh. And it's very sleepy and right. slow. So, oh, but it's woken up. It's eating. Pablito? Pablito. Pablito. Pablito is having lunch. Pablito. Well, he's thinking about it anyway. Are you going to eat Pablito? Check those out. So this morning we went fishing for piranha and now we are having yeah. it for dinner. And that's the big one I caught. Yeah, Sam got the big one. The grande. So how are we going to dig into this? Begin. <laughs> <laughs> so it came served in an orange. A little bit of meat. It's surprisingly decent. Yeah? Yeah. Hmm. There doesn't appear to be a whole lot of meat there. No, there's not. of the Amazon River. This is a pretty cool place to be, wouldn't you say? Yeah, this is a bucket list item for us, definitely. So we are currently cruising down the Amazon with Rainforest Cruises. We're going to be spending four days and three nights aboard the Delphine number no. one. Yeah, and it's a very luxurious boat. It's mm -hmm. we're, we're doing this in style. It's, it's, <laughs> it's awesome. We're going to give you a tour of the boat and we'd also like to show you some of the really cool excursions that we're going to be doing over these next three to four days. So come along, let's go. This feels like yet another episode of MTV Cribs, but come on in. We are staying in the Anaconda Suite, pretty cool. No Anaconda sighted so far. <laughs> but basically, this is our little terrace. We have a nice balcony with views of the Amazon River. And yeah, we can just hang out here, have drinks, read a book, it's pretty cool. I like it. All right, and let's check out the inside of our room. Okay. So I have to admit, we've already unpacked. So it's not quite as tidy as it was, you know. Well, are we ever tidy? Come on. <laughs> Come on. So this is the room. This is where we're staying. Got the bed, a little living area. My laptop's off there in the distance. Yeah, our electronics are scattered around. Yep. And the bathroom's just over this way. Ta-da! Hi! So I would 
would say this is our favorite area, the yes. common room. It doesn't get much more relaxing than the common area here. Yeah. These pillows and check out the cool display of bananas and plantains. Lots of plantains. Yes. And the Amazon. The Amazon River is right yeah. there. And if you want to lounge like a lizard, just head over to the bar over there. Ooh. Check that out. And this is a pretty swanky bar. But you know what? I think I'm in the mood for a game of chess. So Sam, I challenge you. So right now, I'm going to challenge Sam to a game of chess. We've only played chess twice. And you've never won. And I've never won. So let's see if third time's the charm. Team Audrey. Well, it would appear Sam has emerged victorious. <laughs> so I only had one piece left, my king. That so was that, it. That's my third win against Audrey, so if you're placing bets on all <laughs> the two of us, you should probably go with me. Our first afternoon aboard our Amazon cruise was pretty relaxed. After settling into our rooms, we had some free time to enjoy the boat, and as the sun was beginning to make its way down, we made our way up to the top deck where we got to witness one of the most spectacular sunsets ever. The following morning called for an early start, with everyone ready to board the skiff by 6.30am. Our guide had lured us with the promise of wildlife and a delicious breakfast aboard the boat and thankfully he delivered on both of those. That morning we saw countless blue and yellow macaws, a school of pink dolphins playfully breaking through the water, and sloths slowly going about their day. As for breakfast, the captain took us to a secluded lagoon covered in a blanket of water lettuce where we parked the boat and enjoyed a three-course breakfast featuring fruit kebabs, chicken and avocado salad, and hot sandwiches. It was the perfect way to start off our day on the Amazon. What? I am super sweaty, I'm sure you can probably tell. So I'm enjoying the fan, yeah. <laughs> so we are back in the jungle. This afternoon we are doing a jungle walk excursion. And we're also going to be doing a canopy walk across a series of suspension bridges. So we're and just we've on the trail. Boots back on. Rubber boots on. And I think this walk I think this walk should be around 40 minutes until we reach the bridge. So, yeah. Okay, so you've got your weightlifting gloves on. What's this yes. for, Sam? Actually, this is because of the fire ants. And while we're walking across the suspension bridge, we don't want to get any on our hands, so. <laughs> Protection. Protection. So we have reached the first of the series of suspension bridges. Are you feeling ready? <laughs> as ready as I can ever be. I mean, I don't love these, but it should be like some heights. awesome views. I hate heights. Let's go. Bouncy. How are you feeling with all the bounce? Not bad. Are you enjoying the bounce, you Sam? Know what? This one is not very high, so I'm not, uh, I'm not freaked out by it yet. Okay. <laughs> Wait till the next one. Yeah. up in the canopy. It's a 
pretty cool. We've gained quite a bit of height since the first bridge. And now we are on bridge number three. Ooh, this one kind of swings from side to side, doesn't it? So this appears to be the last bridge for a while. And I have to say, I'm pretty proud of Sam. He's practically Tarzan. Practically, yeah. Practically Tarzan. Practically Tarzan. He doesn't even like that. heights. <laughs> down, down, right? <laughs> yeah, you did well. The courage is all there. Meal times were another highlight of our cruise aboard the Delphin One. They had an international menu sure to satisfy every palate, but they also made sure to use Amazonian ingredients and feature Peruvian inspired dishes at every meal. Every meal was a delight to our foodie taste buds. Good morning, it's another beautiful day on the Amazon and we've just finished breakfast and we're now heading out on our first excursion of the day. We will be going piranha fishing and if you watched our previous video, we already did that at the treehouse, however I was very unsuccessful while Sam caught the biggest piranha yet. So we're gonna try it again and see if maybe I can catch one this time. Okay Sam, so ready to fish some piranhas, yeah. round two. So here's the rod, here's the bait, it's just a little bit of meat. And so the whole idea here is to put your rod in and make a splashing sound like like something's just fell into the water like an insect or some creature mm -hmm. and that's going to attract the piranhas. And you just wait until you feel a bit of a tug. So, so over one so far today but I still like my odds because the last time we tried this, when we were doing the fishing with the treehouse, it took me about 20 times to finally catch something. So I'm going to be patient again. Okay, Sam, so attempt number five at least. This is five or six, yeah. The, and you know what? These, these piranhas appear to be a little smarter over here. Either that or our hooks aren't quite as sharp because I haven't even felt many tugs. They're just coming and gracefully... Oh, I feel something here. <gasps> oh, 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 no, nothing, nothing yet. Kind of gracefully... False alarm. False alarm. They're kind of just gracefully taking it off the hook. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. It's See? gone. It's gone. They ate the bait again. Oh. Womp, womp, womp. Oh, womp. So I've been fired mm -hmm. and I've been replaced by Wifey. Wifey. <laughs> Let's see how Wifey. Let's see if I fare any better. Let's see how Wifey does. Oh, I felt a tug. <gasps> no, it's gone. My goodness. <laughs> what? The skill of these piranhas is legendary. Okay, Sam, so tell us about the one who got away. <laughs> so I actually caught it and I was about to bring it in and it got away. But it wasn't a piranha. No, it wasn't. It was a it, little it, sardine. It was, but it was a big fish. It was much yeah. bigger than the piranha I caught the other day. So, yeah, more, uh, more fishing failures over here. So we officially ran out of bait for piranha fishing, so we kind of gave up on that activity. But right now we are trying kayaking down one of the smaller tributaries of the Amazon, so this should be fun. Excited? With the, with the fear if we go overboard that piranhas are going to eat us. Sam! Oh, 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 <laughs> Lead the way, brave one. Lead the way. While I just sit in the back chill out and film right that's how is that how we is that how we roll apparently when you're in the back and no one's keeping an eye on you things just don't happen things don't get done so it's super peaceful out here on the water and i have to say i think this is one of my favorite activities we've done so far I know we we've we've kind of really taken to kayaking over the years, haven't mm -hmm. we? Yeah. If we first tried it in was it Vietnam? In or Vietnam, Vietnam and then Vietnam. Finland. Now we've done it in Finland. We've also done it in Fredericton. We've done it in Canada. So yeah, so this, cool. is, this is something that we're we're not the most adventurous travelers, but this is something that is, <laughs> we can both do, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> 
And that's a scary thought. Cruising down the Amazon. <laughs> about to reach the point where the Ucayali River and the Marañón River meet together to form the Amazon, so that moment calls for a toast. So here is a toast to travels in the Amazon. Salud! Wait, not salud, it's arriba, arriba, abajo, abajo, al centro, al centro, y adentro. Y adentro. Hmm. And that's how you do it in the Amazon. Yeah. So do you want to tell us about this afternoon's excursion? Yeah, so we're visiting this cool kind of little local village. It is called San Francisco. San Francisco. And it's only been around since 1974. So mm -hmm. it's just over 40 years old. So it's going to be cool to check it out. Uh, we're just going to walk around and see what we find. Yeah. So apparently this village, the reason they started it is because they were looking for higher ground since the previous village used to flood during the rainy season. Audrey? Apparently help squeeze sugar cane. I'm going to help squeeze sugar cane. Let's see if I've got talent for this. Ah! 